Good evening. Oh. Hey. oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in here in a while. I know, we're in the sanctuary. <laughs> we uh, dusted everything off, got all the spider webs out of here and a couple of critters and we're good. <laughs> no more raccoons, right? No, no, no more raccoons. <laughs> well, it's the season of Advent and so we are returning here to the sanctuary space. It's kind of a surreal experience um, because when we first began live streaming, this is where it all began, mm -hmm. was in here in the sanctuary. Um, so now we're back for the season of Advent. Again, we want to say a huge thank you to our volunteers who have, I can't believe how far we've come. Yes. And it's a amazing. lot of that has to do with our amazing volunteers that have helped us um, continue to make this live stream available um, during this time. So we're going to start this season of Advent and our, and our theme, Those mm -hmm. Who Dream. But we Those do have some dream. announcements. Yep. We do want to thank our musicians, Scott and Lee and Kristen. For making the shift in here and continuing to be so dedicated to being uh, our music uh, throughout this time uh, we're going on too many months already so thank you for doing that leslie uh, snow who's been down our altar guild and making sure that we have our communion elements up here at every service and donna crumb as well and tyler duvall who's doing our tech and nick ferrante who was doing our tech uh, but we'll be back tomorrow morning um, and if you want to figure out, when you want to see what happens when they don't show up now, watch Wednesday evenings. <laughs> yeah, that was a learning experience, a reminder. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> we can laugh really, about it now. You were good sports fan. Yeah. Okay, um, some things to celebrate. Um, we have a rose on the altar up here by Pastor Manuel. This is given in the honor in honor of the birth of Barrett Augustin Pearson, um, born on November 20th. Proud great-grandparents are Paul and Max Pearson, and parents are David and Emma Pearson. So congratulations to the whole family, the gift of the new life of baby Barrett. Mm -hmm. That's our rose this weekend. And also following this service, um, we'll likely start on time. We'll probably get the service done on time tonight. Because Scott's not working at the Godfather tonight, <laughs> so we'll be done on time. Um, but how we over Zoom tonight at 6.15. Uh, you can join us for that time. Um, we'll play some kind of game. Yeah. yeah, a little time of sharing and um, watch each other eat our dinner and uh, <laughs> and share some some uh, liquid as well. So that's this evening at six fifteen. Um, tomorrow is uh, the last of our adult forums on the Book of Dear Church, um, so that'll be at eleven fifteen, following church on Zoom as well. So join us for that um, final adult forum time, and then we'll be in touch about what is next with our adult forum in the near future. And our youth will not be meeting tomorrow evening uh, for SALT at St. Andrew's Lutheran Teens via Zoom, uh, but we'll be back together next Sunday. Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, because we're part of the... Oh, that's right. I know. Um, we this are is pretty be, exciting. Go yeah. ahead, you got this. Um, our youth group is going to be joining in with um, youth from across California, hopefully Hawaii and Nevada, too, from all three synods, um, West Coast synods um, that encompass California. So Sierra Pacific, Southwest California, and Pacifica Synod, we're having some a joint effort um, for youth meetings. during the, We're going to have our first one all together. Um, on December 5th um, for a chance for all these youth to get together and um, this has been organized by leaders across three synods um, including us here at St. Andrews have been on the organizing um, meetings for that and so we're going to start our hashtag Cali Strong Youth um, Experience on December 5th and then we'll pick it back up after the holidays in January um, for a joint um, youth experience and more information is going to be shared about that with youth and our families soon. Mm -hmm. And a couple other housekeeping issues. Um, we did send out those pledge cards for a stewardship. Um, you can continue to turn those in, mail those in, drop them off in the office, or even email them. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking forward, and we've received so many, and thank you to those who have already pledged for the 2021 uh, year. Also, um, there is a pinch of salt uh, that included in your bulletin, so please check out that. And we're looking for those connection cards along as well with the prayer requests that go on those connection cards. Um, but you can do that at the end of the service so you don't click out of the service, fill out your card. You can stay in the service at the very end, click on that connection card, fill it out. Um, we look forward to receiving your messages uh, through that connection card. We also have a congregational meeting scheduled on Zoom on December 13th, and so you received an email about that today as well. I also want to invite our voting members to mark their calendars for that and join us on Zoom, and um, that agenda and everything will be shared with you in advance. Very good. Um, we have a few prayer quotes up here. Um, this first one is for Ashley Kozer. 
a friend of the Simpertetric family, is awaiting a liver transplant. Um, and prayers are for a swift match and relief from the pain. And prayers for her mom, who is Carla, and this is her quilt. Um, and so prayers of strength and patience for Carla. And we have one last quilt. This is for John Potter. Um, will be undergoing quadruple bypass and heart valve replacement surgery on December 2nd. Prayers are for successful surgery and swift healing for John. Um, and so this, we uh, continue with our prayers for all these individuals with these prayer quotes. I just want to take a point of privilege because we've been praying for my great aunt Linda, who's been in the hospital, and she's watching with us tonight. Yay. So Aww. I just want to say hi to my great aunt Linda, <laughs> and I'm so thrilled that you are feeling well enough that you can join us in worship tonight. So isn't that amazing? Oh, what a beautiful gift. We've been praying for you, Aunt Linda. And we're continuing to pray for you. It means so much to me that you're you're joining us in worship in this way tonight. So I'm just sending my love over the airways. That's all I want. Okay, all the worship. <laughs> yes. Oh. And now we'll continue with our call to worship. <laughs> Piece for our learning of the kingdom of a 
lighting the candle poem that we'll be reading together in just a moment. So our Advent litany. The power of dreams lies in waking up. For when we close, For when we close our eyes, <laughs> we, we can see, see a better world. world. Sorry. <laughs> when we close our eyes, we can, we can dream, dream, dream a better dream. dream. But when we open our eyes, we, we begin, begin the work of faith. faith. The power of worship is the same. When we enter this space, we, we can, can see, see a better world. When we enter this space, we can, we can dream a better dream. But when we leave this space, we begin the work of faith. So come in. Dream your dream. Find, find hope here. For in this hour, we will begin the work of faith. Let it be so. Amen. And so our candle lighting liturgy. I dream of sunflower fields. I dream of key lime pie with a mile high meringue. I dream of the days when we could be part of a crowd. I dream of snow days. I dream of empty beds in jail cells. I dream of a world that will let kids be kids. I dream of full tables instead of empty bellies. I dream of schools with enough money to teach. I dream of parents with enough money to feed. I dream to keep awake because if we don't dream of better days, then we might forget that this is not what God imagined. So today, we light the candle of hope. For hope is the very thing that keeps dreams afloat. May this light be an invitation to keep awake. May this light be our invitation to be Advent people, people who dream. Amen. Amen. protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins. Keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Amen. Chapter of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. No ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said, in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware. Keep alert. For you do not know the, when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all. Keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, o Christ. Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Rock and Redeemer. Amen. Amen. So... <laughs> Anyone watch any good movies lately? Yeah. Yeah? Have you? I'm trying to remember the last movie that I saw in the theater. And I'm not exactly sure what it was. I know. You know what yours was, Tyler? What was it? Avengers Endgame. Avengers Endgame. <laughs> that was two years ago. Right? That was two years ago? Oh, yeah, because you have a little baby. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anyone else remember what the last movie they've seen yet, yeah, Leslie? Definitely. Yeah. Batman? Down Abbey. Down. Oh, Down Abbey movie. Oh, I never Love saw that. Loved it. Yeah. Christine. The Knives Over, the uh, Knives Out. Knives Out, yeah. yes. That was I, good. I also never saw that one. I'm starting to see so I've not good. seen any of these. Okay. You'll so see why when it's my turn. Anyone else remember? <laughs> the Down Abbey in a theater? Yeah, just the last movie you saw in a theater. Anyone at home remember? 
Okay, I think, I'm not sure which, I think mine is Toy Story 4. And that's oh, of Because I have elementary school <laughs> age kids at home. It was Toy Story 4. There's a chance that it was the last Star Wars movie. That was The Rise of Skywalker, right? Yeah, that yes. was the last one. It might, I can't remember which order. That right might now. be it for me, too. The Rise, Rise of Skywalker, yeah. yeah. So um, if you want to share in the chat the last movie you saw in a theater, you're welcome to do that. Um, They're doing it. Yeah. Oh, Nanny McPhee, I see. Oh, no, that was on TV. That was on TV. What? I'm thinking like in a theater. If you think of it, you can share it in the chat. Um, I do feel like, given everything that's going on in our world, that we are pretty lucky to be living in a time of abundance of streaming services, like, like Netflix, right? Because we all need a little escape now and then, a good movie or a TV series to distract us. However, my husband Kevin has this pet peeve when it comes to movies and TV shows. It really bothers him. I don't think I warned him I was going to tell this story tonight on the live show, but I think it's okay. It really bothers him when he recognizes an actor or an actress but can't remember what else he knows them from. Does that bother anybody else? Yeah. 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 All the, yeah, right? So it just, it really gets on his nerves, it distracts him, it makes it so he can't watch whatever we're watching. So then Kevin will be like, he'll turn to me and be like, what else has she been in? And sometimes I can answer right away, but sometimes I can't, so then we end up having this push pause and go to <laughs> imdb.com, right? Yeah, internetmoviedatabase.com. There's also an app for it now, I understand. And then you can look at, you know, you can type in a movie or, um, and then find out, you know, the actor, director, it'll like tell you everything you want to know. So when you can get stuck, you can like type in the movie that you're watching or the show, you can scroll down and then click on it and it will tell you like the other shows that the person has been in. So usually this solves Kevin's problem, but um, it causes another problem for me because when you scroll down the page on imdb.com, there's this little line that says, spoiler alert. Oh, no. And you can click on it and it will tell you exactly how the movie ends. Wow. And that is always a huge temptation for me because I am that person. And I know you all know one of these people. I am that person. If I'm watching a movie and I'm with someone who has seen it before, I will just like pepper them with a million questions like, what's going to happen? Is he going to die? Are they going to get married? I know it, right? And I begin to like beg and plead with my friends to tell me what happened in the movie instead of just, you know, watching it. I'll even text friends now during when I'm watching things that I know they've seen to ask them to spoiler alert things, you know, like give me spoilers. I just, I like to know how the story ends. I don't do this with books, but I do with movies. I like to know how the story ends, even if I just push play. And I think part of the reason why is so that I can be ready for what's coming. If I'm watching like a scary movie, for example, but I know that the main character lives through everything, I can handle watching the scary parts. But not knowing is hard for me. Like I like resolution, I like clean, neat, tidy endings. I like it when the story finishes with, and they live happily ever after, the end. I recognize how nice, how therapeutic it would be right now if we just knew how all of this that we're living through right now was going to end. If we could just find that secret spoiler alert that was just, you know, throw us a few months or even a year into the future to check things out so that we could come back to the present with some kind of assurance to help carry us through for a while. Wouldn't that be great? This period of waiting is tough. It's tiring and painful. The other night I had a dream that I was sitting in a room full of people who were worshiping. I believe I was at some kind of a gathering of pastors because as I looked around the room in my dream, I knew everyone, and I remember the feeling that I had. In my dream, I thought to myself, oh, thank God, the virus is finally over, and I can hug my friends, and we can sing together again. Just thinking about that today makes my chest ache just a little bit. And yet, I do know that that day will come. It will happen. I just do not know the time. Until then, I'm going to hang on to that dream. I'm getting
guessing I'm not the only one who is experiencing these kinds of dreams. So what are you dreaming about? We know that dreams are bigger than just synapses firing off in our sleep. Our ability to dream, not only at night when we are asleep, but also in our waking hours, about what could and might be, is a part of what makes us human. It is innate within us. We are people who dream. And by dream, I mean we are people who hope. Which is probably why most of us are not sure what to do with passages in the Bible that talk about the end of time, like the one that we heard tonight from Mark 13 for this first weekend in the season of Advent. You know, this year, when we're reading the Mark part of Advent, it's all these scary stories about the end of time. Because, and the reason why, I'm just going to sh share as like a sidebar, is that there's no birth narrative in the Gospel of Mark. We don't get to hear the story of how Jesus was born in the Gospel of Mark. We're going to save that later. We're going to hear, um, when it gets closer to Christmas, those birth narrative stories um, from the Gospel of Luke. But for now, we're in the Gospel of Mark. And in this text... Jesus talks about a time in the future when he will return and declare the end of the age. And it is not exactly the kind of text that makes you feel happy when you read it. In fact, Jesus himself tells us to keep awake and pay attention because we don't know when these things will take place. And it just doesn't sound like a happy ending to me, does it? Well, there are many things that we do not know about the end of time. There are many things that we do not know about when Jesus will fulfill these prophetic words, though many people have tried and failed to predict Jesus' return. We do not know when the end of time will come. We don't know how it will come. We don't know what things will look like, and we are left to grapple with all of these questions. We're left to grapple with our uncertainty, and that makes us uncomfortable. It's hard to admit that there are things that we simply cannot know in our humanness. It's humbling. There are mysteries of life and faith that no amount of science or philosophy or study can tell us. There aren't any spoiler alerts that we can click on that will just reveal everything to us. These mysteries of life and faith can only be revealed to us by God in God's time. And now, we have a completely unprecedented understanding of what it means to have to wait. And it can be agonizing. Waiting for something that is promised to happen in the near future and yet affects us here and now. This is a new kind of waiting. There is the waiting that we're more familiar with, you know, like waiting to open those Christmas presents waiting for the safe return of a loved one from a tour of duty, waiting for a phone call, for an apology, for a chance to apologize, waiting to feel like an adult, waiting to retire, waiting for a child, waiting for things to get better. Have these other experiences of waiting prepared us or conditioned us for the waiting that we are doing as a world together now? Waiting to feel safe again? Waiting to be with the people that we love and miss? Waiting to see our friends and go back to school? Waiting to be able to do even little things like sing a song together or go see a movie in a theater? And in that regard, this text does speak a truth into this season of waiting. Because waiting, and not knowing when the hour will come, is exactly what this season of Advent is about. We wait and we prepare for the arrival of Emmanuel, God, with us. Last week in his sermon, Pastor Emmanuel talked about these in-between liminal spaces. As Jesus was teaching as he traveled between Galilee and Samaria. And today's text talks about the in-between spiritual spaces. As another theologian puts it, 
We live, according to the Gospels, between the two great poles of God's intervention in the world, the coming of Christ in the flesh and his triumph over death, and the coming of Christ in glory at the end of time, and his triumph over all the powers of earth and heaven. This in-between time, though fraught with tension, is nevertheless also characterized by hope as both the beginning and the ending of the story of the church, and therefore our story, which has been secured by Christ. We are therefore free to struggle, to wait, to work, to witness, to live, and to die with hope, because we know the end of this story. From Moses to Martin Luther King Jr., history is full of examples of those who, because they had been to the mountaintop, had peered into the promised land and had heard and believed the promise of a better future, found the challenges of the present not only endurable but hopeful. We too, amid very real setbacks, disappointments, and worries of this life, can raise our heads because we have heard Jesus promise that our redemption draws near. And yet Jesus implores us that while we are waiting, we have work to do. We have the opportunity to begin living a holy life, even right now, through the loving and serving of those in need around us. Here at St. Andrews, we do that in a variety of ways, with our hearts and our hands and our words. But as we know, there is always more work to be done in the name of Jesus. Which was why we chose to forge ahead with some of our dreams and visions for the ministry of this congregation, as we hope to be a place that welcomes and loves all of our neighbors. Focusing right now on what intentional welcome looks like for people who live every day with disabilities and their families. And the most precious and impactful way to see these dreams become a reality is through the building up of life-giving relationships within our families, friendships, within our community, so that we have something to share, a glimpse of a different kind of future that we have available to us every day when following Jesus is at the center of our lives. This promise of a future in which God will set the world right and we will experience full communion with our Lord affects us in the here and now, in our waiting. Because we wait with hope and anticipation. We know how the story begins and we know how the story will end. This waiting will not last forever. But now we exist and live somewhere in this in-between. And the in-between space is a space where dreams are born and where hope has power. Hold on to those dreams so that we can use them to shape a different kind of future. Because this time of waiting is also going to bring us into a season of restoration and rebirth. Our faith calls us to trust that God has prepared the way for us and that Jesus, our Savior, walks with us through all things, forgives us all trespasses, and holds true to his promises. And because of Christ, we look to that day with hope and gladness. And that hope is the thing to which we cling when we confront the scary parts of life. Because fear and death do not have the final word. Christ does. And Christ tells us not to fear, but to believe. Believe that God is our Alpha and Omega, our beginning and our end, the source of our dreams, in our sleeping and our waking, and our hope for tomorrow. God recognizes you and knows your story and breathes life into your dreams. The days are surely coming. Amen. Mm -hmm.
trust and hope, let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have a few uh, prayer updates to share with you uh, this evening. We're praying for the brother of Mary Agnes uh, Smith's friend, Debbie Nye. Um, Debbie's brother is in the hospital with an infection. Prayers for a proper diagnosis, treatment, and healing. Also, a prayers of peace and comfort for Lois Yar. Um, care and peace for her and her sister-in-law, Evelyn, passed away um, a week ago Friday. And then her husband, uh, last Sunday, passed away, and they lived in um, Illinois. So prayers of peace and comfort for Lois. We're also praying for peace and comfort for the families and friends of Michelle Moore. This is Marilyn Duba's cousin who passed away. We give God thanks for her life. Original dreamer. Over and over again in scripture, we hear your dream for a beautiful world. We lift up now our prayers and dreams of the church, the world, and all those in need. We hear your dream for peace and reconciliation. We hear your dream for harmony and togetherness. We hear your dream for community and hope. We hear your dreams, and yet we do not open our eyes. Kindle a hope in us that will burn through the longest nights. Give us the strength and the will to keep awake in this sleeping world. With hope we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Oh, great dreamer, you dreamed up the stars in the sky. You dreamed up that magic baby smell and the way cream sinks into coffee. You dreamed up the church 
the crunch of fall leaves, and jazz music. You dreamed up wisteria and evergreen, and the pure magic that is six-foot-tall sunflowers. We pray for our world, for our neighbors, and for our earth. With hope we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You dreamed up a dream for your people, a dream of hope and justice, a dream for eyes wide open, to both the world's suffering and the world's beauty. We pray for people who are suffering and struggling. We thank you for the work of special education teachers, occupational and speech therapists, and especially for the staff and clients of Home of Guiding Hands. With hope we pray, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We offer now the silent prayers of our hearts. With hope we pray. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. <clears throat> we pray for you to plant that same dream in us. Pour out your spirit on our hearts and minds so we may see what you see and dream what you dream. Gratefully we pray. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Lord's peace. Peace. Peace, peace be with you all. Peace, Tyler. And as we continue with the receiving of our offering, we do want to give you a chance to see the update about um, where we stand with our financials, it's available on the Pinch of Salt announcement pages. So you can check that out. Also, so you can be informed um, for our upcoming congregational meeting, which will be taking place in a few weeks. Again, we want to thank you for your generosity and support. It has been amazing, a source of hope and strength for all of us um, here at St. Andrews. And so it's very easy to give online um, through our website. In just a little bit, we're going to be highlighting the work of an organization that we support through our benevolences. We also want you to know that every gift that you give to St. Andrews, a portion of that goes out into our community to support amazing organizations that do work that we couldn't do on our own. Um, so just look forward for that here in a little bit. We'll be highlighting one of those organizations that your giving allows us to support as we come to our children's time. So in the meantime, we'll sing our offering song, Belonging, and we want to thank our musicians. Thank you. 
for children's time. I know it says in the bulletin that we'll be doing another ASL lesson. We're actually going to take a break from that tonight. We do want to thank Brian Frazella, who did an amazing ASL uh, American Sign Language lesson for us last week. We're going to have more of those um, coming up in the future. It, it came in especially happy on, or helpful on Wednesday night when we had no sound. I could at least let you guys know that I love you and that Jesus, Jesus loves you. Um, tonight, though, what we're going to do instead is share a really beautiful video. So um, we do want to let you know there are some images right at the beginning um, of, a, of a baby who was born very prematurely. So just so you're aware that those images are coming. But this is a story of a little warrior named Max. And, um, and through his birth into the world, um, the help that he received through an organization called Home of Guiding Hands. Home of Guiding Hands is an organization here in the San Diego area um, that supports people um, with disabilities of all varieties. Um, it's an organization we support with our benevolences. Um, and through, um, many of you might know about Home of Guiding Hands because of Virginia and Roger Myers. And they're um, worshiping with us here at church often at the 11 o'clock service um, because they have a, a relationship and a history with Home of Guiding Hands. So we're going to share this story of hope and dream um, of Max, little baby Max, and his story um, through, um, and, and again, this is a way that we are lifting up and supporting um, our emphasis on people, welcoming people living with disabilities, and especially grateful and thankful for the work of Home of Guiding Hands in San Diego. Here we go. Max was born at 26 weeks. He weighed one pound and four ounces. So tiny. So tiny, it was so scary. And while he was in the hospital, he had over seven surgeries. He's our gladiator, and his name is Maximus from, from Russell Crowe, <laughs> the, the gladiator movie. Our gladiator was in the hospital for 297 days before going home. We're new parents. We, we don't know what to expect, mm -hmm. especially with a NICU baby. Yeah, yeah, we're nurses. We learned about the child development, but we didn't know how to help him. We got in contact with Home of Guiding Hands. They came in and they did their evaluation. We got another phone call this time from Rosie. I go into the kiddos' houses who are delayed in some areas of their development, and I help them get to where they need to be. Max's biggest obstacle has been oral feeds. It's an absolute fear of him to eat or drink. He has his feeding tube for 19 hours in the day. We told uh, Rosie about it, and she would uh, do some little play with him, like kissing toys, um, help him to bring things to his mouth. It all, it all ties in together. We work on how the baby is processing things, how the baby is, if he's talking or not, uh, the gross motor part, high motor, the social skills, and the self-help area. He would bang his head on the couch, and Rosie was like telling us, oh, that's, that's a sign for forms of expression he's having trouble with. Mm -hmm. So she would use sign language. He got it so fast. He's not talking yet Please. with his words, but he has a lot of yeah. signings, you know. Rosie was able to identify that. He's really a sensory baby. Any touch, something different for Max, he doesn't like. And with that, we're like, oh, it makes complete sense now. Even bath time was, was hard at first. And then he got used to it, and now he, he loves water. Sometimes you don't even think about those things until somebody comes to your house and they, and they tell you, hey, this is what the baby needs to do to get here. Working with the kids when their brains are still developing so rapidly, we can make a lot of growth and that lessens the services that they need later in life, whether they even need services at all. We offer the initial assessments, specialized instruction for early education, speech therapy, project impact for kids who have communication concerns, infant massage, our parent play groups that we do monthly. We really wanted to take Max to the play groups because we wanted him to interact with other kids. Yeah, we don't feel alone. We have a ball pit, we have a sensory room, we have arts and crafts. Our parents absolutely love it and they always tell me, I wish that this was every week. There's a lot of kiddos out there that need the services. 
and a lot of families, not just the kiddos, but a lot of families that need the support of somebody. Without early intervention for us, we just, we don't know where we would be. If other families who need it can't get it, that, that, that makes me sad. I just, I just, I don't want to, I don't want to imagine it. No. When we work together weekly on reaching those goals week after week, and then one day, the child just gets up and takes two or three steps. And that is the most beautiful moment to observe. Not only is the parent rejoicing, but as a teacher, you know that you're doing good. Let us pray. God, we thank you for children. We thank you especially for the ways that all children reflect your love to us and through us in our world. So we pray for your children, for your kids, um, for whatever support that they need. We thank you um, for their presence in our lives and um, ask for you to be with them each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now continue with our offering prayer. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessing, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We will come to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ, our Good Samaritan, who tends the wounds of the body and spirit with the oil of consolation and the wine of hope, and the sun of righteousness who raises us to life on his healing wings. We remember the night which betrayed the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, then gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, Gave thanks and gave it to the drink, saying, This cup, this new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ is present and comes to us through ordinary things.
this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. Amen. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his station on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And we sing our closing song, a very hopeful song, soon and very soon. Got some music here, just hold on, folks. <laughs>